Hi everybody, I'm Emily, one of the designers here at The Quilted Cow, and today I'm super excited to bring you the Matilda bag. This is one of the that projects out of your subscription box for December. So the Matilda bag is great, and I think you're really gonna love making it. First though, let's thank our sponsors. We are sponsored by Husqvarna Viking Machines and Creative Grids Cutters, Mats, and Rulers. So let's get started. So the Matilda bag is a really cute little bag that you can take with you wherever you go. Now, it was originally designed as a book bag so that you can put a book in the top here if you wanted to, or a tablet in the top here. So if you wanted to head into a coffee shop and take a book with you or you know wherever you go, if you ha have your book with you, then you can just put it down in here. You can also maybe fit your phone in here or pens or pencils. You can change the pocket size however you need to. This bag though can be used for more. So heading in somewhere and you just need a couple of items with you whenever you go, you can add the shoulder strap or crossbody strap. Also, you can add a wristlet strap. So these are optional for add-ons or for leaving offs, whichever one you wanna do. I really like this bag. I think that this is gonna be so nice for everybody to be able to carry with you. So that is the Matilda bag. You're gonna be able to find kits for that on our website. So head on over to thequiltedcow.com, grab yourself a kit. The pattern is sold separate. So make sure that you grab yourself the pattern as well if you don't have it already. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out all of your parts and pieces. And one of those parts and pieces is the front of the bag. And we're gonna make that slant pocket. It is super simple to make the slant pocket. You're going to layer the lining of the pocket on top of your outside the, the main pocket piece. And on the back side of the main pocket piece, you've put your fusible fleece. So go ahead and layer those right sides together. And then you're going to measure two and three quarter inches down from the top right corner. So once you get that measure down two and three quarter inches, then you're gonna grab your ruler. So I'm gonna grab a super long ruler for this. <laughs> All right, so I measured two and three quarter inches down, and then you're gonna go from the top left corner to that mark, and you're gonna draw a line. Once you've got that positioned right on that line, grab your rotary cutter, and you're going to cut that piece off. I know, it's a little scary. And then you're gonna take this to your machine and you're gonna sew a quarter inch all the way across that slanted line. So I like to, whenever I'm sewing this, I like to go ahead and put the lining fabric down instead of the fusible fleece fabric down because it's, it's gonna make sure that everything leads into the machine nicely. So I'm gonna put it lining fabric down and sew a quarter inch all the way across. Let me get that done. I'll show you what that looks like when I get back. All right, so we've got this sewn on and now we're just gonna press this open. And I'm gonna show you how I like to press this open because for me, it just tends to work out better like this. Now it looks like at first it's not gonna go flat. It's not gonna go back the way it needs to, but it will, I promise. So. I press the lining up and get that crease done, and then I position it to where the lining, the bottom of the lining and the bottom of the front are together. And I like to start here and my, work my way up to the seam that I just sewed, and that's gonna make everything nice and flat. And then you're gonna take that and just top stitch straight across that seam that you just put in there. So that is the front pocket. Once you've got that top stitched, you're going to take and you're going to mark, and I like to use a chalk marker, you're gonna mark the midway point here. So I've done that on this other one that I've got finished. So I've got that one top stitched, and then I've, I'm marking on this. Now, I like to mark directly in half. If you want to do a smaller pin pocket over here and then a larger pocket so that you can, you can put your phone in there or whatever you wanna do, go ahead and mark it wherever you want it. But I just went ahead and did directly in half. I lined up my ruler, took my chalk marker, and just drew the chalk line just like that. So once you've got that done, then you're gonna lay this on top of the accent piece, which is this piece right here. So you're gonna lay it on top of the accent piece. 
and then you're going to sew directly down that line and then you're also going to go ahead and baste this, the sides and the bottom to this accent piece. It's going to make everything stay where you want it to stay, so go ahead and take the time to do that now. So whenever I baste it, I always do about an eighth of an inch, so less than the quarter inch seam allowance. You don't want that showing once you've got everything sewn together. So you want to do about an eighth of an inch all the way around here, and then you're going to sew. I actually like to sew from whenever I'm putting it in my machine from the bottom up. That way it kind of pushes everything towards the top rather than pushes everything off the bottom and then backstitch at the top of here. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to get that done and I'll be right back and show you what that looks like. So I have my pocket sewn down. I've got it basted to the edges of this accent piece. The next part is to go ahead and add your lining to the accent because that is actually the sleeve, the pocket, the sleeve pocket for your book. So I'm going to put your lining face down your accent piece with the pocket on it face down and you're just going to sew directly across quarter inch seam allowance and then we're going to press that open the same way that we did the pocket so let me or that front pocket let me go ahead and get this sewn together get it pressed and i'll show you what that looks like whenever i get back all right so now i have that i have that piece the the lining piece put on the accent with the front pocket on. I pressed it open and then I also top stitch across the top. When you top stitch, I do like to make sure that whenever I top stitch, it's just an eighth of an inch from from the edge. It just makes it, it finishes it finishes it nicely. So it makes it look really good. So now I've got that piece finished up pretty much. And what we're gonna do now is grab our front piece and the lining, I'm sorry, the back piece and the lining for the sleeve on that one. So those two pieces are two different sizes. And when you put those together, you're gonna have the top here, you're gonna line up the top edge and the sides. And this is about an inch to an inch and a half shorter. The lining piece is about an inch to an inch and a half shorter than your main. So it's okay. <laughs> it will all work out, I promise. So once you've got that done, you're going to line those up. You're going to stitch a quarter inch across. And then once you do that, you're going to press this open, but you want to press it so that the seam allowance goes towards the main that has the fusible fleece on it. Once we get it pressed to that, to the fusible fleece side, then we're going to turn it over and we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch just on the main fabric. So leave the lining out of this completely and just top stitch that seam allowance down so it lays nice and flat. There's a reason for that. We wanna go ahead and just keep that, keep that lined up just like this and it's gonna stay open. So once we have that done, now it's time to make the decision about doing the tabs, doing the, the strap, how you're gonna do that, what you wanna do. Now, you have the option to make both the tabs, put your D-rings on them, and then have the option to do the the shoulder or the crossbody strap, whatever you want to do that. Or if you wanted to, you could leave off one of the tabs and just do a wristlet strap. So if you left this one off, you would just have this one tab on here and you could do a wristlet strap. If you want to just do a little quick grab and go, you know, have, have a couple of bucks in there, have your book in there, just ready to go into the coffee shop and sit and read for a while and relax whatever you want to do. So make your decision at this point as to what you're going to do on this. All right, so I have those basted down. Now I don't have to worry about them. Get my clips out of the way. <laughs> Makes it easier on me. So like I was saying, we're going to line up our lining pieces right sides together. We're going to sew from the top of the lining where that, where that stitching is or where the, the lining meets the accent. We're going to sew from there all the way down to the corner across the bottom, but leave yourself a good three, three and a half inches open here at the bottom so that you're able to turn the whole thing right side out and then back up the other side. When I do this, I do like to go ahead and sew up the sides first. It just makes it a little bit easier. I can sew up the sides and then I'll go across the bottom, leaving that opening. Makes it a little bit easier, keeps everything kind of all situated better. And then also add some clips. Before, whenever I put the this outside pocket on the accent piece, I didn't put any clips on that. And really, you kind of you kind of want to go ahead and clip it together. Also, whenever you go to put the lining piece on, go ahead and use clips. I uh, I went back and did that off camera, and I used some clips, and I did forgot to tell you. <laughs> so this just keeps everything where you want it to stay. 
and makes it a little bit easier to manage everything whenever you get to your machine. So I'm going to sew up the sides and then across the bottom, leaving that three, three and a half inch opening at the bottom. And then I'll be right back and show you what that looks like. So the next step is to go ahead and sew all the way around where the back piece and the accent with the front pocket is. This time, we're going to go ahead and line up the bottom and it's going to fold the back piece over just like this. We don't really need to press it. You can finger press it for right now. That way it, it just kind of lays where you need it to be. But it's going to fold over where the D-rings are, where the tabs and the D-rings are. So those are going to lay flat and it's basically going to fold over those. So those are going to be laying flat. And we're just going to have this lined up. Now when we sew this together, we're only going to sew up as far as where the, the accent piece with the front pocket, where the, the front of the bag is. We're just going to sew up to where that ends. So it's going to leave a good half an inch up here unsewn where those tabs are. So leave that open for right now. We're actually going to come back and finish that out after we've sewn around this section. So I'm going to go ahead and clip where I need to clip. It looks and feels a little strange at the moment, but don't worry. It will work out. It'll all work out in the end. Make sure I don't have any extra threads that are on the front side. All right. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to start at the bottom and sew up the sides and then across the bottom. It just, to me, it works out better that way. So go ahead and do that. And I'm going to show you what that looks like whenever I get that finished. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've got everything sewn up to where it where that meets, but I still have where the tabs are are in to go ahead and sew down. So I left that for a reason, just because whenever we sew this, we're just gonna sew right along that top and we're not gonna sew any further down. When I sewed everything up to meet, I went ahead and backstitched each time. That way it, it holds everything in place where you want it to be. And then now I'm going to go and take this and I'm going to sew where those tabs are. The other thing you do want to watch is just make sure that your D-rings are still out of the way, which I just noticed that one of my D-rings has kind of folded in. So I'm going to reach in through the bottom of the lining and fold that out so that everything is laying flat and I'm not going to try to sew over those metal D-rings because your needle is not going to like that if you do. So make sure that the D-rings are out of the way, your tabs are in there, everything's ready, and I'm just going to sew that short little half inch seam right there using a quarter inch seam allowance, but just sew that short little seam right there just to hold everything in where it needs to go. And then it'll be time to turn this bag right side out. So let's get that sewn and I'll be right back. So very gently open up that opening in the bottom of the lining. And we're just going to start leading this through as we go along. But once you get those poked out, then it's time to go ahead and stitch your lining, the opening and the lining closed. So I'm not going to do that. I want to use gray thread so that it matches. And uh, the thread I have in my machine is really, really dark. So I'm going to do that later. But all I do to do that is I fold everything in and make sure that my seam is nice and straight here. So I get a nice and straight seam, fold everything in, and then you can either machine stitch across there really, really close to the edge, or you can go ahead and hand stitch it. Go ahead and whip stitch it with a needle and thread if you want to. In the meantime, like I said, I'm going to put some matching thread on there and do that, but I'm not going to take the time at the moment to do that because you can always go back and do it later too. But go ahead and push your lining down to the bottom corners and then this is folded out nicely and then we're just going to give this a good press just so that it lays nice and flat the way we want it to lay and i really like how the back side comes up and folds over and just peeks over the top of that accent it's really super cute doing that really like that slant pocket as well and like I said, whenever you're making that slant pocket, if you want to divide it more times, wherever you want the division to be, that's up to you. Go ahead and make this bag yours. All right, so we've got a good press on there. We've got our tabs with the D-rings, or not, if you decided not to do the tabs with the D-rings. So this is pretty flat now. 
the last thing we're going to do is add our little snap closure. So to make the snap closure, we've got a little bit of lightweight interfacing that we have pressed to the wrong side of the fabric. By the way, whenever you're pressing any of your interfacings, don't forget bumpy side is the glue side. Make sure that you're putting the bumpy side to the back side of your fabrics. Make sure it's not to the front side. Make sure that it's not bumpy side down onto your ironing surface. You do not want to get that glue all over the place. It's messy. So bumpy side to the back side of the fabric. And then you're just going to grab a thread spool. And this is all I did for this. I love just to grab whatever is handy in, in my sewing studio. You can grab a, a thread spool, a small round dish, whatever you want to do to draw the corners on this. So all I did was grab the thread spool, spool and, and traced the corner here and then moved it to the other corner and traced a curved corner. So I drew my curved corners on that. Once you've got that, and this is an option that you can do, once you've got that, you can go ahead and press your press the bottom of this tab up a quarter of an inch. And you can use your your hot ruler to do that if you wanted to. You bring it up, press that quarter inch seam or that quarter inch. So now that I've got those pressed up, and you'll notice that they are the same length here. Then what you're going to do is you're going to stack these right sides together and this is going to keep your curve the same on both sides. So got that and now it's time to sew this together. So what you'll do, what I like to do with this, once again, I'm going to clip them together, keep them, keep them held together. And you're going to leave this folded edge open. You're not going to sew that. You're going to sew down the sides and across the curve and down the other back down the other side. Go ahead and leave this folded. What I do like to do though is I like to start my stitching here down here in you know beyond the fold and that way any stray threads or anything like that are going to be tucked into the tab instead of hanging outside of the tab. So, so whenever I, that's what I did on this one is I went ahead and I clipped those corners and turned it right side out and then used my stiletto or whatever pokey tool that you have to help to get those curves a nice rounded shape. So once you've got that a nice rounded shape, give it a good press. That's what I did with this. Make sure everything is folded in nicely still, which it should be. Give it a good press and then we're going to top stitch all the way around, including across the bottom. So go ahead and top stitch all the way around these edges of this. And then I'll show you how to attach this to your bag. We gave it a good top stitch. We clipped the threads and now we are ready to go ahead and add this to the bag body. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it an inch and a quarter down. We're going to center it here. And then we're going to put it an inch and a quarter down from the top. And then we're going to put two stitch lines in here. And they're going to stay underneath of where this fold down is. So they're going to stay down here in the lining area. Keep them down there. It's fine. They don't need to go up on the fold or anything like that. If you wanted to later on, or if you wanted to make sure that, you, you know, you could put an extra stitch line across the top along this top stitch line, I didn't feel it was necessary, but I'm going to go and I'm going to stitch over my top stitch here and then stitch again about a quarter of an inch away. That way it reinforces that a little bit and go ahead and go off and back stitch just a little bit, a couple stitches off of the, the strap. All right. So I have attached my snap, my snap strap. And then the last thing to do is actually put the snaps on. Now you're ready to go ahead and put your straps on here. Carry this wherever you would like. This is the Matilda bag. This is one of the that projects in the December subscription box. If you got your subscription box, I hope that you enjoy making it. Not the same fabrics as this one. However, this is a really cute kit. Head on over to our website, grab yourself the kit, grab a pattern. The pattern is sold separately. Make sure that you go and get those. Make yourself a Matilda bag and enjoy using it. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe to these videos. Make sure that you continue to get this content. We like to make, keep making sure we can send you content. Have a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching. Okay, you wicked cool quilters. Good job. You made it to the end. We would like to thank our sponsors, Husqvarna Viking Sewing Machines, Creative Grids, Rulers, Rotary Cutters, and Mats, and Wilmington Prints for the beautiful fabrics. Thanks for watching.